Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Thank you everyone that submitted questions for this week's Flash and Arrow Q&A. A lot of stuff to talk about, lots of Firestorm, as well as a lot of, you know, like Diggle Green Arrow stuff being talked about behind the scenes. So we'll try to get to all that. Just to start with the Diggle Green Lantern stuff, because everyone was going crazy about that last week. What David Ramsey basically said is that Diggle Green Lantern was being discussed behind the scenes, but it wasn't any kind of confirmation that they're planning on doing that. It's just that the idea is being discussed. The Green Lantern core is like the next major franchise they could introduce into the Arrowverse. You know, first they started with Barry Allen and The Flash. Now Green Lantern is like the next logical step. The Adam's an important character, but I don't think he's quite as important as Green Lantern. Logically, you'd expect them to start with Hal Jordan just because there's a lot more awareness for that character. But because he's going to be part of like the Flash Green Lantern movie that's coming, they might want to stay away from Hal Jordan in the Arrowverse and just stick with another Green Lantern, which is where Diggle comes in. Arrow plays a little fast and loose with continuity from the comics, which I think is okay, but if they did do a Diggle Green Lantern, he probably would end up being Jon Stewart. I think the lesson we've learned from the Flashes is that people really enjoy continuity with the comics as much as possible. Sometimes because of crazy circumstances out of your control, you can't always do things exactly the way they were done in comics, but in the case of Jon Stewart Green Lantern, I, I think they'd be okay. Just add a tab in Chrome for like Arrow Season 4 continuing discussion stuff. There's no way that they're going to make a decision on that anytime soon. I think eventually we'll get to Justice Society and some of the crazier stuff, but first things first. Arrow is a crime drama with superheroes in it, so it's always going to be true to that first. Okay, so moving into questions. Just careful for spoilers from Arrow and The Flash this week if you haven't watched the episodes yet. So here we go. Nathan H. asks, Why do some people get powers and others didn't? Oh, so we're starting with Flash stuff, and then I'll get into Arrow. So you're asking about why are there some metahumans on The Flash and why are some tech-based? Mostly because the people that they choose to get tech-based powers are like the really smart people who would naturally be able to develop those. Pied Piper is a really good example. They said that because he's a genius, he would have the ability to create tech that would give him superhuman abilities. Then you have people like Clyde Martin, the original weather wizard from episode one. Clearly not a genius. So if he's going to be a villain with powers, it'd make more sense for him to have metahuman abilities. I think that's a really cool idea too, is that like the really smart people that make their own superpowers also prey on the weak people and turn them into like Frankenstein monster metahumans. That's kind of what Gorilla Grodd is. He's kind of like Frankenstein's monster. For anyone that's read Frankenstein, you'll note that that does not end well for anyone. Next question, Eric Jaffa asks, what's the purpose of the Flash ring? Usually in the comics, it's just used to house the Flash's costume so that he can change into it at super speed. Barry Allen in the Silver Age comics was also able to compress his own molecules and hide inside the ring. The TV show has not fully explained what the Reverse Flash uses his ring for, and whether or not it's a replica or it was passed down by a previous Flash. It's just that in the comics, there have been a number of different rings. It's not just like one ring that gets passed along. There are copies that are created. What I'm really hoping is, is that Harrison Wells is hiding something in the ring, and it works just like it does in the comics, like something's going to come flying out of it. Next question, Rishikesh asks, How come Wells, Cisco, and Caitlin find a hardware solution in such little time? So you're asking about the, the Firestorm device. Well, you have to assume that Harrison Wells knew exactly how to build it. Like he knew instantly what it was and what he needed to do to create it. So Harrison Wells has like a blueprint inside his head. Two, they're all super geniuses. And three, I mean, it's television. So they need to finish the story in 42 minutes or so. So just think of it as like a combo of extreme intellect and TV logic. Next question, Xavier asks, do you think that Dr. Wells will inadvertently make Eddie the second reverse flash? No, I, I actually think that Barry Allen's going to do that. I think once we get to the end of the season, we'll see like this big timeline where Barry Allen is the originator of the entire Flash lineage, including the reverse flashes. He's the point of origin. Something happened in the future to change that. Harrison Wells came back in time to make sure that it happened so that he could go back and save his wife. Because if the Flash was never created, then the reverse Flash never happened and it messes the entire timeline up. If you remember when Barry Allen was fighting the reverse Flash and he said, we've been at this for a long time, we don't know how long they've been traveling through time fighting each other, so they could have changed and fixed a lot of things already. Don't go too nuts with the logic though, the show is going to completely explain everything, especially now that we're getting into time travel. They'll start to explain exactly how the show is doing time travel. Next question, so Jerry Rodriguez asks, do you think that Eiling will become the general? You're, you're talking about like his comic book character with metahuman abilities. No, I, I think that he'll probably just be an asshole. Don't you just feel like Clancy Brown doesn't need superpowers to be intimidating? He's so much fun to watch. If you actually, if you want to see him with real superpowers, be really scary with superpowers, go back and watch Carnival. That was an old HBO show. Okay, so moving into era territory. Movies rocks. That's 
that line, I can't believe I didn't recognize my own brother under that hood or something along that line. Total nod to Lois Lane, Superman's thing. Yeah, I mean, we have to remember that there's like a certain suspension of disbelief. It's like they don't want everyone to know everything just because it would be ridiculous for the story. I think that funny moment that Thea had with him after the fact where she was like Korean barbecue and he was like, nope, C4. And they just kind of nodded at each other. They can do funny moments like that because of that original superhero trope where it's like, I can't believe I didn't recognize you. You were wearing glasses. Next question, Jordan asks, do you think that Slade will kill Thea in a future episode? I know he doesn't have Mirakura in him anymore, so he's probably not quite as crazy. I actually, I think there's more of a danger of Thea killing Slade and Oliver freaking out. Remember, Oliver doesn't want Thea to go too dark. She doesn't want her to turn into Merlin. If you look at some of the promo images, it looks like Slade is going to force her to kill him or force Oliver to kill him. I'll go on record as saying I hope this doesn't happen because if they kill off Slade, they can't bring him back in a future episode. And he's just way too interesting as a character to kill off for good. I think they'll dance around that somehow. Like somehow Slade will get away and they won't be forced to kill him. But that is why Merlin sent them to the island to regain their quote unquote killer edge. Next question, Kathleen asks, why hasn't Diggle been fighting or helping out? Seems like they haven't been using him a whole lot lately. Well, that's just because the last couple of episodes have been mostly about progressing the Black Canary character. The show just has to pick and choose which characters it focuses on. Don't worry though, there's going to be a really awesome Suicide Squad episode. I want to say it's number 17 and the, and the title is Suicidal Tendencies. So that's going to be a big Diggle episode. Next question, Mindovation asks, Will there ever be a TV Justice League coming up once Vibe and Firestorm and other possible characters are established? Yeah, I, I definitely think there will be like a big team up episode. I think the relative size of the team, like the, the number of different characters will just depend on how many they can afford to pay. I think it's a big goal of the producers to get to Justice League at some point. But I think what they might do is just use it in one of those Flaro crossovers in future seasons. It'll be a big event piece for the network. So it is like prime territory for Justice League moments. Next question, Orc Hunter asks, if Laurel is not going to get powers, do you think that they might just make those devices small enough so that they can be put out on the necklace or something, but just as powerful? So oh, you're asking like, you know, give her pseudo canary cry powers, but using tech. Yeah, I totally think they're going to do that. It might not happen right away, but if people on Team Arrow are going to be getting tech from Star Labs, presumably other characters will get tech as well. I may have talked about it in a previous video, but if you look at the way Pied Piper's powers work, I think that would be a good analog for the canary cry like a sonic based device that you can wear thank you everyone for submitting questions these are always a ton of fun to do remember manu bennett coming back to arrow next week so be sure to subscribe to get that video it's going to be crazy like if you've seen the promo images he just has this crazy insane look on his face it's going to be so much fun and because i might not get to my spider-man q a i do want to do another spider-man marvel video so i might just do that next week just do it as a separate bonus video there's plenty more to talk about including the fact that dylan o'brien probably going to be cast as spider-man don't worry lots of fun stuff coming this weekend everybody have fun happy valentine's day oh and i almost forgot the showrunner on constantine said they're probably not going to make an announcement on season two until may like whether it's canceled or renewed so just do not worry about that anytime soon while you guys wait for those new videos to post, you can click here to catch up on Arrow in the Flash, and you can click here to catch up on the Constantine finale. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all high five. I'll see you guys tonight.